Have you ever wondered how a city gets a port? When you see those big cranes and even bigger cargo ships, 99% of the time, they're operating off the coasts of prime real estate all over the world. Hi, my name is Blythe and I host the podcast Everything is Logistics, bringing you another fun fact in our Source to Porch Supply Chain series. Now, throughout history, a port is established before a city is established. That's because the logistics around a port, along with its economic activity, is what historically causes human settlements and future development. One place that happened is New York City, where the location was originally selected because the area has large, deep, and sheltered harbors with navigable rivers and estuaries nearby. I snapped this picture in front of the Maritime Museum over at the South Street Seaport in New York, where, side note, the longest running printing press and New York's oldest operating business under the same name since 1775 is still in operation. So using a lot of the same equipment that seafarers needed in order to send mail all of those hundreds of years ago, that same equipment is still being used today. Now, another city just down the East Coast is Jacksport, my hometown, Jacksonville, Florida. And I got a chance to tour the nation's first port recently. And yes, I said the nation's first port because trade activity in the Northeast Florida region dates back to the 1500s. This is from the Jacksport website saying, in 1565, along the banks of the St. Johns River, John Hawkins participates in the first commercial port transaction in what would become the United States. The Jacksonville Port Authority later records the copyrighted designation as America's first port. Now fast forward to 1963, Jacksport is officially official and since then, things like warehouses, airports, and obviously housing and more are all built. Here's a clip from Jacksport's Senior Director of Communication, Chelsea Cavanaugh. So we have three cargo terminals that are very different and they offer different capabilities. You know, there's kind of a saying in, in the maritime industry that if you've seen one port, you've seen one port. And I think that's very um, true here at Jacksonville. Of course, you know, all of our terminals are different and they operate differently, but we have ships that, you know, may call one terminal one week and another terminal another week. So it really just depends on what their needs are. And it may even depend on what their needs are for that specific call. Roughly 1500 ships that call our port each year. And we move about 10 million tons of cargo annually. So um, each of those terminals do stay um, very busy. You know, we are one of the most, the nation's most diversified ports. That's something that we're very proud of. So we move a lot of different cargo types, you know, containers and autos are the two biggest that we move, but we also move military equipment. A lot of people may not realize that um, we are one of the nation's 17 strategic seaports. We are the only port in Florida that moves uh, military cargo for things like national defense and foreign humanitarian aid. When a port starts to see success in establishing more trade partners, the rest of the city's surrounding area tends to flourish. Here's another clip from Chelsea talking about the economic benefits of being a port city. Um, but I know that you talk a lot about marketing on this show, and that's really our role. In addition to maintaining the facilities, we really work to market Jacksonville as a leader in global trade. And we really work to promote the advantages that we have. You know, Jacksonville has fast access to 98 million U.S. consumers within one day's drive. We have outstanding labor, rail connections. Um, so, so we just work to kind of really spread that message to the industry. And there you have it. That's how a city not only gets a port, but builds their city up for the benefit of future generations.